Hello, my friends. Here I am again, Pedro Candeias, directly from Portugal, the founder of Karate Science Academy, with one more analysis of uh, strength and conditioning videos that WKF elite athletes or their coaches um, share on their social media. Okay, today I'm br I'm bringing you um, five videos, very short videos from the um, Iran male Kumite team. Okay, I'm going to put my 20 minutes of analysis okay as I, I will share as much as I can in just 20 minutes in order to help you to understand better what we see what you you see on these uh, elite athletes strength and conditioning videos they share okay I hope my English today is better than yesterday let's see what happens so let me share my screen here i am 20 minutes let's go let's go let's go let's go uh meanwhile i want to to remember to to remember you um that next week we are going to have a special online event dedicated to the theme move faster in kumite and kata where i'm going to share with you three very very deep master classes um on monday um wednesday and friday um, where we are going to analyze in the first master class the, um, the principles, the foundations of speed and power training for karate. Uh, Wednesday, we are going. I'm going to give you everything, the most um, reliable evidence really knows about ballistic training. Okay, very important uh, training method for um, both kata and kumite. Okay, for power developing, uh, development and speed. And on Friday, I'm going to share with you. A crazy masterclass about plyometric training, the most complex um, method we may use in karate to develop speed and, and power. And um, I don't know, but I, I'm, I believe I'm going to give you at least three, two hours in that masterclass. So please, this is that the event is just for the strong, those who are seeking for true knowledge and not uh, the secret. And uh, if you want to know more and register, is an open event, a free event. We already have more than 1,000 karate coaches and um, karatekas from all over the world. And if you want to register, the link is in the description below. So let's start here with the first video. So these are videos taken from the, um, the strength and conditioning coach of the Iran Kumite team. Okay. Um, he has a great Instagram, okay? He makes a, a great job um, sharing what he really makes with one of the um, top uh, national teams in terms of Kumite in the, the world, WKF Kumite, of course. So, let's see. Here we have Purshab performing a squat, a deadlift, uh, call it what you want, with both constant resistance placed by the discs, the bar, okay? And progressive resistance due to the attachment of this rubber band um, that will put more um, a greater load at the end of the movement so let's talk a little bit about this uh, in the video one and two because it's almost the same thing we have the um, constant resistance it's important to understand this these concepts and the progressive resistance okay the constant resistance is uh, fine is found on uh, barbells dumbbells um, uh, discs our own body weight uh, uh, weighted vest for example um kettlebells etc and progressive resistance is found on the rubber bands or for example the use of chains and um, in the the bench press the squat etc but i'm not going to um approach that that part progressive resistance what's the goal when we use resistance uh constant resistance we produce lots of strength or power okay depending on the the, the contraction speed or the the load we are trying to move um but at the the the, the, the last part of the movement we are not uh, um, obligated to produce as much strength or power as in the um rest of the movement okay so the rubber band will add okay 
a greater resistance, a greater load at the final part of the movement, uh, stimulating our neuromuscular system to produce more strength or power all uh, along the, um, the whole movement. The goal is a little bit there or that, or at least to stimulate the last part of the movement that we can't reach um, with uh, constant resistance. Okay, so you can use it um, mixed as the um, Iranian athlete is, is, uh, is using, both constant and uh, um, progressive resistance, or you can isolate it once uh, one time you work with just the, the, the bar, for example, and the discs, and other times you place the, um, the rubber band and work only with the rubber band or just with the bar to uh, support the rubber band, for example, okay? You can use it. They are not, the, the, the constant resistance is not better than the progressive resistance or um, the otherwise, um, but they are complementary, okay? You should include both types of stimuli um, along your training cycles, okay? It's good for power development, for hypertrophy development, for maximal strength development. So it's um, it's good. Okay. Next video, not here. Okay. We have another example of what we are talking about here. Another Iranian athlete performing the same type of strategy, but with a, a squat with a barbell in the um, in the on the on his back. But let's observe that this athlete and the last one also, perform the squat by lifting the, the heels off the ground as Damian Quintero did in the video I analyzed yesterday, okay? This is a great um, way of stimulating a multi-joint exercise as the squat, get him, getting it uh, even more close to the needs we have in karate displacements, jumps, kicks, etc. okay? The squat, the traditional squat by itself is already a good exercise that will have a good transfer, transferability to um, commit and kata performance. It's a multi-joint exercise where the, 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 um, the knee and the hip segments learn how to work together. Okay, that is very, very important in terms of intermuscular coordination and transferability for karate. But the ankles are a little dead, okay? This way, you will activate also the structure around the, the ankle, the, the calves, for example, the, um, the, the um, how it says in English, the, the foot plant. Yes. Okay. All structures that will work, that will um, activate when you try to displace fast, when you try to kick fast, when you try to uh, jump as high as you can. Okay. So two great strategies we find here in these um, videos, okay? Here, an example of, a, an, of, an ex of a way you can use a traditional weight equipment, um, weight training equ equipment, the cables and the rope, okay? Using it, using this equipment to um, perform a more specific type of movement for Kumite, okay? The rotation to perform, for example, a Gyakuzuki, this type of movement, you grab the rope, you use the, the, the load needed for the, the stage you are in terms of the training cycles along the season. Let's talk a little bit about this. Listen, I have a, 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 um, a lesson of about 45 minutes, okay? In, on, in the, on YouTube, dedicated to the four training zones of muscle power, okay? Go there watch the lesson, study what I'm sharing with you, take your notes, because if you understand that, you will understand better why a, a, a well-designed strength, power, and speed uh, training program must include all types of loads, all types of strategies and methods that are effective, of, of course, okay, in terms of evidence. And because although you have... Uh, two more specific training zones for karate, the zone of speed and speed strength, you must not rely only on the, those two zones, but also in the zones of strength, speed and strength, because they will add, they will um, allow your karatekas to have gr a gr um, greater results when they are training in the specific zones of speed and speed strength, okay? So 
everything is important uh, depending on the, the moment of the season, depending on the stage of, de of development of the athlete. Um, of course, the percentage of training along a season is greater in the speed and speed strength zones, of course, but it's also important to understand that a well-designed strength and condition, strength, power and speed program must include methods and loads in the four zones, okay? Um, so, what they are uh, performing, it can be used to um, develop the athlete, uh, the athlete um, abilities, okay? With the traditional method for um, power development, okay? The protocol generically is this, maximum movement speed, Okay, as fast as you can, three to six reps per set, maximum speed. Um, we are talking on average from three to five sets per muscle group, but it depends on the physical conditioning of your athlete. Um, we are talking about pauses of two to three minutes between sets, okay? Why? Because we are simulating parts of our power production that depends um, mostly on the neural component of the neuromuscular system, okay? And it takes time to recover and you all, if you want to develop your maximum speed, okay, maximal speed, um, okay, um, you must have your karatekas fresh to perform each repetition at their maximum capacity of speed production okay when you start to see some fatigue installed where the athlete is performing as fast as he can or she can uh, but with the installed fatigue you are entering in the world of stamina and endurance training and you are not developing your karatekas maximal speed production okay so be aware of that i'm going to talk a little uh, more deeper about this we, in the ballistic training next week in the special online event I talked about in the the, 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 the start of the, 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 the lesson, okay? But make this, um, okay? Put this in your head because it's very important. Many people confound um, stamina training, endurance training uh, with high intensity, with speed development, with power development. It's not the same thing, okay? Now, Let's see what I have here more. Two more videos. Where are they? Below me. So, now, another video from the same athletes. Okay, you can use this type of exercise with two goals. Okay, let's see here. Endurance or reactive strength. That is developed... It's developed with biometric training, biometrics, okay? So, um, never forget that the exercise itself must be transferable to karate, of course, but beyond that, the outcomes you will take from the, the exercise always depend on the protocol you use on the method you use, okay? So if we and, uh, just grab this exercise, you can use it to develop endurance. If you put, if, if you put your karatekas to perform this uh, kind of exercise, uh, I'm having some uh, remodelations here in my gym and my dojo. So if you listen to this machine noise, it's uh, what is happening here around me, okay? So I'm sorry. I'm just like this without filtering, and so that's it. Listen, you grab this exercise and put your, uh, your karatekas, performing this for th three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine minutes in a, in a moderate um, um, speed, okay? You are working uh, their endurance. If you ask them to perform that three, four, five minutes at maximum speed possible, with the fatigue installed, you are working endurance, but more in the zone of stamina, okay? But if you just grab this exercise and want 
to develop the reactive strength. In other words, the, the capability of the transition, the of transiting, transi transitioning, yes, between um, fast transitions during committee, for example, you need to develop the reactive strength through a, a mechanism called stretch shortening cycle. I'm going to uh, give you all the knowledge about this in a practical way next week, okay? Just register. You are going to love it, I, I'm sure, okay? So if you want to develop the transitions in a kumite action, for example, counterattacks, uh, um, two or three displacements, uh, displacements in a row, change of direction, for example, yes, you will need a lot of reactive strength. So um, how do you transform this in a plyometric exercise? I'm not going to give you all the information because it's the most complex method. It's the method that has the, 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 the higher number of variables to manage, but there are some things that we have to um, put in our heads as coaches. So you will, these athletes are very advanced athletes. They, if you have athletes advanced in Pyramid, they don't need to be world champions, of course, but if they are physically prepared to perform an advanced plyometric training after a few months of a, a, very, a, of a good progression plyometric um, strategy, okay? 120 ground contacts per session, okay? This, uh, this is how we count the number of repetitions in plyometric training. So each time these athletes make a um, kind of a, a, of a jump with this exercise or another, another exercise, it's uh, counted as a ground contact, okay? A very advanced athlete doesn't need to perform more than 120 contacts on the ground uh, per session. Evidence shows us clearly that performing 120 or 300 ground contacts, it, it will lead you to the same results, but without wasting time, without placing as much stress as you would place in your athlete's joints um, performing 300 ground contacts, you save time for the karate itself, kumite technique, tactics, okay? So we must rely always in the three pillars of training, that is results, of course, um, efficiency, not wasting time. If you can, may have the same results with less time, great, okay? And safety methods that won't increase the injury risk of your car attacks, okay? Athletes or non-athletes. So this is very important to understand. You will split these 120 ground contacts per, uh, for eight to 10 reps per set, okay? The rest uh, pause between sets depends on the type of exercise you, you make, okay? So just to have a, an idea that this type of um, exercise might be used to um, a variety of goals, okay? And let's see this one. Okay. Here we have a circuit, a circuit, a circuit, 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 circuit. okay? With hurdle jumps, with the... Uh, some displacements with the cones and a specific karate um, attack, the Uramashi Gary. Okay. Once again, you can use this as a speed, a maximal speed development, or as an endurance or stamina exercise. So if you if your athlete performs this um, in a way that uh, from the two or from two or three um, repetitions he makes from uh, of, of the circuit, it will be an endurance or stamina training, okay, development. But if you make it, make him perform one circuit, one circuit, whoa, is, this is whoa. once as fast as possible, you put him in rest for two or three minutes, make it again, and the athlete feels that the speed of all the, the, the old circuit is um, at its best, great, maximum speed development. When the athlete starts to feel or you observe that the speed is not the same, 
the fatigue has installed enough to impair the results you may have in terms of maximal speed development. So, or you stop or you transform it into a endurance, an endurance or stamina exercise. When do you stop the endurance or, st or stamina exercise? When your athletes are too fatigued to keep a good technical level of the exercise you chose, okay? Just another thing um, that I, I want to analyze with you, that is the technique of plyometric drills. For example, these first uh, hurdle jumps are plyometric training. If they are made with the protocol, the right protocol, or else they will be, it will be endurance training, okay, with jumps. But always take care of, um, be careful about the how your students jump the hurdles. Because we focus too much on the height of the jump, on the height of the hurdle. Believing that jumping higher is always best. Always better, okay? Not always. If you want to make the transition phase between movements in Kumite faster, the focus, the main focus should not be, okay, the how, how high they jump. The transition between hurdles, it's way more important. So you, may, you have to put hurdles that allow your karatekas to make a light jump, to not to touch with the heels on the ground without bending the knees too much, okay? And if you, for example, when I watch these athletes, I can see that the, uh, the hurdles are adequate to a level of strength, okay? It's slight, the jump is slight. If the jump was heavy between the hurdles, it's because they were too high, too intense for the eccentric strength of your karatekas. Okay, so be aware of this, but let's talk about that um, in detail next week. I have almost 22 minutes right now. I'm done. Please, I wait for you in the event. And uh, tomorrow, I'm going to make the fourth analysis and Friday, I will make the last analysis of this week, and I hope you enjoy it and send me your questions if you have it, okay? Best wishes, and see you tomorrow.